So iPadOS 15.5 was released to the entire public and it's been out for a few days now with some new features that came with 15.5. So without further ado, we're gonna talk about everything new with iPadOS 15.5 and whether or not you should update if you haven't done so yet. So without further ado, let's talk about it. Let's hop right into this video, everybody. The first thing I do wanna show off is the actual size of the update. So you can see that even though I was on the beta program, when the original file does release, regardless if you're a public user or a developer or a public beta tester, you're always gonna to update to the full version of the public release. So even if you are on iPadOS 15.5 beta 4, and you've been updating consistently throughout the process, you still have to make sure you have at least 10 gigabytes of open space in order to get this installed correctly, because this is five gigabytes and that's a huge file. So make sure you have enough space when updating to this so you don't run into any hiccups while updating. But again, we're at five gigs with iPadOS 15.5, a lot of fives in this. The next thing I wanna check is actually the build number. So if we go into the about section, you'll see we're on 15.5 and we're on 19F77. So you can see that Apple actually got rid of all the monikers because once we get rid of the monikers, so there's no more A, there's no more B at the very end of it, that means we're out of the beta stage and we're in the public version of this update. So now let's talk about the fun stuff, right? Let's talk about what's new in this update. So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is actually inside the podcast app. And when you first open up the podcast app, I actually took a screenshot of it. So we go into the photos, you can see that there's a new splash screen. So in this splash screen, you see filter episodes and browse by season. So they added two new big features to podcasting because I know Apple is making a big push into the podcasting space because they see how lucrative it is nowadays. So filter episodes, so it's when viewing a show in your library, filter episodes by played, unplayed, downloaded, or saved. And then also you have the ability to now browse based on seasons. So if you have a podcast that's been going on forever and has like a hundred seasons, you no longer have to go through an entire list of let's say a thousand episodes. You can now go specifically to season 59, episode three, and then pick that episode to listen to it. So to show you guys this in action, this has been my most recent podcast, Go Heat. We just won the Eastern Conference Finals game one, but you can see that we can now filter based on episodes. Like I said, unplayed episodes, downloaded episodes, or all episodes. And then depending on how that podcast is structured, if it is structured based on seasons, inside this little section, you will also be able to look at seasons. And then another thing I wanna show you is inside the settings. So if you go into the three dots right here, go into settings, you now have the ability to automatically have the iPad download which episodes you want. So let's say you always wanna have like the last three or the last five episodes downloaded just in case you're in a situation where you don't have service, like you're jumping on an airplane or you're on the highway and there isn't a lot of service. You now have the ability to go into downloads, click on this automatic download, and it lets you again download based on whatever criteria you want. So you can do the latest episode, the last three, the last 10, and you can even do it based on time. So if you have a podcast that's pretty much every single day or they release multiple episodes in a day, you can do it within time. So within the last 24 hours, within the last seven days, 14, 30, and you can even download all of them. And what this does is it actually deletes the episodes after the fact. So let's say you wanna have the last two episodes downloaded. Whenever a new one comes out, that second one gets deleted. So if you're downloading episodes one and two to start off with, and then episode three releases, that means episode one gets deleted from your downloads to clear up space to make sure that, hey, you already listened to it, let's get it off, no need to keep it on. So feature number two that did come out with iPadOS 15.5 is inside the home application. Now I'm not 100% sure if it only works with Apple branded products or if it should also work with HomeKit enabled products, but to show you guys with the Office HomePod, so we'll click on here, we'll scroll down to the settings. You now have the ability to see Wi-Fi strength and signal strength of each individual item in here. So it's not referencing the signal strength of let's say your iPhone and your iPad, it's actually referencing the signal strength of the device itself. So again, if I scroll down here, click on where it says Wi-Fi network, and then it shows you the name of the Wi-Fi and then how strong the Wi-Fi is. So if it was kind of too far away from the router, those signal bars would get lower and lower. So that's always good to have, just a little bit more insight to know where you should place all your smart home devices. But again, you do have these hue color lights, which I have right here. So if I long press on here, and go to settings. Let's see if it does show me this right here. So you can see in the settings from a third party manufacturer like Hue Lights. And again, these are very old. So maybe if you got newer ones, it'd be a little bit different, but the Hue Lights does not give you that signal strength indicator. So for right now, it looks like it's only for actual Apple products, but who knows, maybe they'll actually implement this for other HomeKit things. Cause I think it's more important to have that kind of situation or that data for things like smart light bulbs or other smart connected applications. Because the last thing you want is to put a HomeKit enabled product too far away from the router and then it doesn't work. The next new feature has to be inside of the news application and inside a news application, you actually have some articles that are audio ready. So the audio feature is built into it and you can actually listen to those articles. And normally you see something kind of like this where it says more coverage, but it says like audio sample available. And now with 15.5, you can actually preview that audio sample by clicking on the three dots. And then right here, it'll show you a little 30 second clip of that audio sample to see if, hey, you wanna listen to it or hey, you don't really wanna listen to it and then move on to the next one. So that's a new feature that was brought in to the news application. And I believe you might need to have 
Apple News Plus, which I do not have. So keep that in mind. I've only seen it from other people that are subscribers to Apple News Plus. And then one of the last things I'll mention in terms of tangible visual differences is this new Apple Cache icon. So before, if you guys look at your phones or your iPads and you're on 15.4 and lower, then you can see that this little cache icon is actually an Apple Pay icon. And this is just Apple rebranding their Apple Cash because again, they're trying to have different silos for every sort of financial situation. So you have Apple Card, which gives you the credit card. Then you have Apple Cash, which I think is gonna be their form of debit card. And then they're gonna have a different one for gift cards. So like store credit stuff to kind of keep you in the Apple ecosystem, which again is good and bad. The good is that it's probably gonna be very user-friendly just like the Apple Card is, but at the same time, Apple is gonna have full insight of your finances. And that's up to you if you care that Apple has that or not. I'm okay with it because I see the value exchange with the Apple card and things like that. But overall, just to let you know, that is a possibility that Apple will have pretty much every single silo taken care of and not just Apple hardware anymore. And then the last little difference is actually inside of Safari. So when you go to actually share the page in Safari, if I go here to try to share it, the new find on page glyph is different. It used to be just a little magnifying glass, but now it's a magnifying glass with a page, which makes total sense because you're looking for stuff on a website page. But that's pretty much everything you need to know from a feature standpoint. And then overall performance has been great. Again, I've been using it for a few days since it did release, I believe last week on Thursday, and everything's been working perfectly. There's no more issues that we had with 15.5 beta three, especially. It made the iPad very hot sometimes, which is something that I've never dealt with in my entirety of using iPad since 2018. It, got, it was running like very warm, which was very, very strange to see, but that was fixed. Another thing that was fixed was actually the storage bug. So ideally, if you go into iPad storage, it should load up relatively quickly, which you can see it does load up very quickly compared to what we dealt with in the past. So Apple seems to have alleviated or at least sped up the storage bug issue, which you can see we have about 85 out of my 128 gigs used, which the next iPad I get, I think we're gonna go full one terabyte because everything is edited on this iPad and I'm constantly removing and I'm constantly adding new footage and removing footage and deleting and undeleting. So we're probably gonna have to go to at least half a terabyte, if not one terabyte. And the last thing I do wanna talk about is actual battery life. So in terms of battery life, the last 10 days, we're averaging about two hours of screen on time, about 55 minutes of screen off time. And you can see like on a day, here we go, like Thursday, where we actually got three hours and 23 minutes of screen on time, took up about 75% battery. Again, that's okay. It's not getting us to that eight to 10 hours of battery life. I always tell people, if you wanna squeeze out as much battery life as possible out of these iPads, you wanna stay inside of the Apple application ecosystem. So use Safari for as many things as you can, use FaceTime for video chat, You know, use Apple TV for streaming. All those things kinda of help out with the battery life because the moment you start going to third parties like YouTube TV, LumaFusion, YouTube, other things like that, then your battery is gonna drain very, very quickly because Apple just, for some reason, maybe doesn't let them optimize for battery or developers don't want to optimize for battery. I don't know 100% what the case is, but that seems to be what's happening. And then you go on a day like Tuesday where we have four hours of screen on time and we only used up about 50% battery. So on a day like that, we could get a full eight hours of battery life in my opinion. But overall, I'm very happy with the performance. I'm glad 15.5 is out. And one nice little added bonus is that if you are on the beta program with your iPad, but you weren't on the beta program with your Mac, that meant that you lost universal control. But now universal control is back up and running if you are on 15.5 regular on the iPad and even with Mac OS 12.3, you should be good to go. But let's finish up this video and get out of here. So that is pretty much gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, the main tangible difference was the new updates to the podcast app, making it a little bit more user-friendly, keeping us top of mind, especially when it comes to storage. So if you guys do wanna watch your episodes or have those backlog of episodes to a certain extent, you can always have that now inside the podcast app. And there's some other interesting ones inside of the code, like the sensitive location situation, where inside of the Photos app, it creates memories and it does those memories based on location and time. So with these sensitive locations, now these are kind of gotten rid of. So if you are in these certain locations that Apple has deemed sensitive locations, then you won't get memories from being in those locations. And then also I'm curious to see what they do with 15.6, if we get a 15.6 update, and then finally 16.0 when it comes to Apple Cash, because you guys saw the rebrand, that went from like the Apple Pay card to now the Apple Cash, so now there's a silo for the Apple Card, which is the credit card, Apple Cash, which seems to be kind of like the debit card that you can use, and then also like the iTunes gift card situation, also got rebranded, so now there's like different silos for every part of the, the finance, so Apple can kind of control even your finances now, which is a blessing and a curse, because yes, they're gonna make everything very easy to use, but at the same time, Apple's gonna have all of that data, and that's what they want. If they can get into your finances, then they absolutely win, because they'll know exactly what you can buy, how much you can buy, how often you buy, and things like that. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys didn't make it to the very end, leave a little dolphin, and leave a comment down below. Did you guys update to 15.5? Are you doing it on your iPad, your iPhone? 
which one is it? I'm very curious to know. And what are you guys expecting with 16.0? Because now that 15.5 is out, we're only a couple weeks away now from WWDC on June 6th, and it's gonna be great to see what Apple does with the iPad lineup, because in my opinion, this is a make or break year with iPad OS 16. They gotta show people that the iPad can be a computer, especially for the people that want the iPad to be the computer, and to really justify the price point at the iPad Pro level at the $800 and $1,100 price point. But like I said, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Click on one of these videos over here if you wanna keep learning about iPads, iPhones, and maybe something else. But I'm out of here. Peace.